what's happening. This is Joshua Bwetsi and you're watching Sports and Icons. Okay, so I've just got through watching all of Fight Camp 3. Of course, I watched it live on the zone. And to be honest with you, I don't really feel like doing a post-fight review for any of the other fights. Not because I don't like the other fighters. It's just that for me, it was predictable what was going to happen and exactly how it played out is exactly how I thought it was going to do, as I'm sure it is for many of you. So I'm not going to waste my time doing post-fight reviews on them. But I was interested in the main event, Joshua Boati versus Ricard Bolotniks. Now, the reason being is because I've seen Bolotnik fight on a couple of occasions where he just absolutely was bouncing around and undefeated at the time, Stephen Ward. And quite how Jose Burton got to the end of that fight with Bolotniks is beyond me. Because again, Bolotniks just put an absolute beatdown on Jose Burton. So I knew that Bolotniks was a very, very good fighter. But of course, if you don't like Matt Room, if you don't like Joshua Boazzi and that, for example, and you sort of criticise... They won't look too much further than the record of Blotniks. 18 wins, 5 defeats and a draw. Three of those by stoppage. But of course what they don't realise is that all five of those were he lost in cr at cruiserweight. But as a light heavyweight, he's come on leaps and bounds. And very, very dangerous opponent. Very, very dangerous. And I knew that coming into this fight. So of course I was very interested to see how Joshua Boati was going to get on. Now my prediction for this fight, by the way, was... Joshua Boazzi to win on points. That was my prediction. That, that's what I thought was going to happen. And to be honest with you, while I only gave up to the stoppage, of course, uh, spoiler alert, Joshua Boazzi stopped uh, Blotniks in round number 11. But up to that point, I only gave Blotniks two rounds, which I think was round seven and round eight. For some reason, Joshua Boazzi just took those rounds off. Even though he did drop Bolotniks in round number six with a check left hook slash uppercut, if you like. Um, it did kind of like catch him off guard. He went down and Boazzi kind of just let him off the hook in some way. Don't get me wrong, he did dog him down. But for round number seven, I thought he was going to jump all over him. But he didn't. He really didn't. Now, again, Bolotniks, again, yes, of course, he did win a round with the referee. Because the referee took a point off Joshua Boazzi as well for uh, hitting Bolotniks. Um, for a third time below the belt. Now, just on that bit there, you can tell that uh, he's a virtual hunter a fighter now, can't you? I mean, look at um, Andre Ward, right? What can you do? What can you do? But at the same time, I don't think Boati was doing it on purpose. Anyway, so Bolotnik's very, very tough guy, very durable guy. His footwork isn't the best in the world, that's for sure. But he is very heavy-handed and he is very, very durable. That's why I thought that Boati may actually go the distance on this one, which would be the first time that Boati's ever gone uh, 12 rounds. In fact, I think that uh, this is actually the first time that they, they've actually gone past seven rounds. Now, Boati, of course, I've met Boati. Um, he's a really, really nice, humble guy. And in that ring, he's totally different. Okay, he's a totally different animal. Okay, he just sees an opening and he goes for it. Now, in this fight, he was a boxer more than an aggressor. He was using the jab, he was using the right, and his left hook was fantastic. He was using the body, um, with the body shots, the jabs to the body, and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, I, if I had to really criticise Boati, it would be the fact that every time he seems to throw the left, whether it's a jab or a left hook, he tends to drop the right hand a fair bit. That's going to leave him open for a big left hook himself at some point. Now, he did get caught on a few occasions by Blotniks. Blotniks isn't the biggest puncher in the world. I mean, out of his 18 wins, 8 stoppages. But at the same time, they're heavy enough. Okay, They're going to get Boatzi's attention, that's for sure. And they could end up hurting Boatzi. Of course, we've seen Boatzi get hurt. Was it, was it his last fight or maybe the fight before? But either way, for me, I thought that uh, Joshua Boatzi performed very, very well. Very, very well. And he had to go through some soul-searching moments in the sense of because he's going into a, a part of a fight that he's never gone before. As I said, I don't believe that he's actually gone past round seven before off the top of my head. But a lot of that was down to, I think, uh, Virgil Ortiz as well because in the corner, he kept saying to Boati how you are an elite fighter. Your conditioning is fantastic. Convincing Joshua Boati that he's in good condition. In other words, don't start thinking, I'm getting tired, I'm getting tired. It's all like a psychology. But I think that either way, Joshua Boasi done fantastic. Blotniks is very, very durable. I mean, him just getting up in round number six after that big left hook is a congratulations in itself. 
Now, of course, he did get on his bike and uh, Boazzi was finding it difficult to track him down. So maybe that's why, why he didn't really finish him. And because Bolotniks, he did go into survival mode. And if somebody's on the back foot and trailing around the edge of the ring against the ropes, it is very, very difficult to pin them down. But I will say, though, that uh, Boazzi, he's very, very composed now. Very composed. Don't be wrong, he will throw flurries. He will engage in the fight. And he's very, very heavy-handed, you can see that. And thankfully for Bolotniks, he's got a very, very durable head. But either way, it gets round to round number 11. And I'm thinking that this fight is actually going to go the distance, that my uh, prediction was going to come true. And out of nowhere, Bolotniks, he's moving to his right. So he's getting out of the way. He's getting out of range. And Boati just seems to just catch him with an overhand right, virtually straight right in some ways, and just catches him right on the button. And it didn't look like it was a huge shot. But on the replay, you could see it landed pretty heavy. Blotnitz went down and he didn't move. He almost fell out the ring. So hopefully he's okay. I don't like the fact that they made Blotnitz stand there at the end while they announced Boazzi as the winner. I don't really know why they need to do that. I think that uh, Blotnitz should have stayed on his stool until all that was done, or at least go get some medical attention, go make sure that he's okay. Because the fighter will always tell you, yeah, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay, because he looked like he still wasn't with it when the, when the referee was holding his arm, getting ready to raise the, hand, um, the arm of uh, Boazzi. So for me, I didn't really like that. I thought that uh, they could have let Blotnitz go off and uh, at least get checked out properly. I mean, it's one thing to get checked out in the ring, but you do need to go back and uh, get checked out thoroughly. So hopefully he's going to be okay. I mean, I'm sure he will be. But either way, for me, very, very solid performance by Joshua Boazzi. I was very impressed with it. I really was. I enjoy watching jo um, Joshua Boazzi fight. I really do. Now, his next move, should he be fighting for maybe a European title, like heavyweight? Maybe, maybe. But as I said before, I think Bolotniks was his European test. Of course, he's a European fighter. But, but, but what I mean by that is, Blotniks is of that kind of level where he's good enough to be a European light heavyweight champion. Now, is that going to be the plan? I don't know. I mean, Eddie Hearn, he does like to create a little bit of hype. He does like to get his fighters to a certain point where maybe the European level, maybe they're not. Well, let's just throw him in with the world title anyway. So I would probably fully expect Joshua Boazzi to potentially fight maybe a Bivol next or whoever it may be. I fully expect that to be Joshua Boazzi's next fight. Going on the print that Eddie Hearn would normally do, I would fully expect Boazzi to get a world title shot next. Is it too early? I mean, time will tell. For me, I would like to see all of the British fighters at light heavyweight get it on. I'd like to see Boazzi against Callum Johnson and mix it in there with, again, still Anthony Yard, of course, Lyndon Arthur and uh, Craig Spider Richards and a couple of others. Um, uh, I mean, of course, Dan Aziz. What a talent he is. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the fight. Congratulations to Joshua Boazzi. Very, very good performance. That's my thoughts. You drop me yours. Click thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.